This video is part three of a four-part series on the Dizzy Glue-Up Jig. The Dizzy Glue-Up Jig is used to glue together the laminate disc layers to enable the rotation of these laminate disc layers at accurate angles of rotation and also to eliminate the slipping and sliding of the disc during the glue-up process. In part one of this video series, we describe the history of the development of these various methods and techniques for holding and aligning the laminate disc during the glue-up process. A total of four different methods were described in that video. In part two of this video series, we describe the construction of these MDF boards with T-channel slot inserts. Also in part two of this video, I redesigned these uh, L brackets, which now consist of a one quarter inch diameter metal pin, which is two inches long. It's attached to a brass key, and this key slides into the channel on the uh, glue-up jig, and a brass thumb screw holds it in place for the accurate positioning of your disc during the glue-up process. This video is number three on a series on the Dizzy Glue-Up Jig, and in it we will describe how we made these L-brackets which slide into the T-slot channels on the MDF boards to enable the alignment and positioning of the laminate disc during the glue-up process. This video will describe in detail how we made these L brackets, which were machined in our shop using a mini metal mill. Since most of our viewers may not have access to a mini metal mill, we will be making these L brackets available on our website. In part four of this video series on the Dizzy Glue Up Jig, which will follow shortly, we will demonstrate the application of the Dizzy Glue Up Jigs to assemble and align the laminate disc to produce some Dizzy Bull projects. We will also demonstrate how these jigs can be used to glue up some multi-layer segmented discs for some segmented disc wood turning projects. We start now with brass blocks. These uh, brass pieces are one and three quarter inches long, a quarter inch thick by a half inch wide. And the first step they have to fit inside the slot on my T-slot. And this width of the base here is 0.475. So I have to mill down the thickness of this piece to probably about 0 0.470, give myself about four or five thousandths clearance in the inside. So we're doing that in the mill, putting the block into the uh, vise, and I'm going to be taking off around uh, 25 thousandths off the edge. So the next step is to take my brass pieces, which are the right width, and cut off the, some shoulders so that it slides inside the channel. A through hole 0.246 inches in diameter is drilled 0.8 inches from the right edge of the brass key. This hole is for the press fitting of the quarter inch diameter metal pins.
Next, the number seven drill is used to drill another through hole, one half inch to the left of the previous hole. This hole will later be tapped to fit a one quarter inch by 20 thread per inch thread. The previously drilled hole is then tapped with a one quarter inch by 20 thread per inch tap. Next thing I want to do, I want to clean up these pieces, get rid of the burrs, polish them up a little bit, and that can most easily be done on this floppy wheel. And I have some uh, 220 grit sandpaper on here. Just The next step is to insert my pin into the holes in these brass keys. Now my pins are a quarter inch in diameter, 0.250, and my hole I drilled is slightly undersized. It's probably a 24, 6, 2, 4, 7, so it's, you know, one or two thousandths undersized. So it won't fit in, it has to be pressed in place. So I have a jig here, which is a, just a block of aluminum with parallel sides, and I have a quarter inch hole drilled to the center. This is perfectly parallel to this top surface. And just as an alignment jig to make sure my pins go in straight. So I just press that tight against the brass key and then press the pin in place. And then check it with a square and it's perfectly perpendicular to the surface of the brass key. We're down to the final step in the completion of these L brackets, and that's the addition of the uh, brass thumb screw. This is a brass thumb screw with a quarter 20 inch thread per inch, and that is what uh, locks it in place on the T slot. You could also use uh, set screws. In fact, you might actually like the set screws you know, better, they hold better than the, uh, the thumb screws. Uh, the disadvantage is that you need an Allen wrench all the time to to attach them, uh, the thumb screw is just more convenient. But uh, you could use these set screws also for the same purpose. So. We'll be listing these on our website uh, with the thumb screws, which is how most people will use them. And this shows the reason for the extended rails because the thumb screw I can clamp all the way out here and I can get a disc up to six inches the hammer on, on a six inch piece of MDF. In my previous version where the rail ended here, you know, I'd only get maybe a you know a four inch diameter disc. So it just gives you more more flexibility because you do want to clamp 
your uh, disc together uh, with spring clamps on the end. So you need some room to get the spring clamp in. This concludes part three of this video series on making these uh, dizzy ball glue up jigs for gluing up your multi-layer laminate disc. In part four of this video series, I'll be describing how these jigs are actually used to glue up your laminate disc for making your dizzy ball projects. And I'll also be describing how these same jigs can be used to glue up some multi-layer segmented discs for making some segmented disc projects.